This is NLC News. I'm Jack Middlecott Davis, and this is your NLC update. Nord executed a masterpiece performance against Verdant this week, somehow managing to claw defeat from the jaws of victory, finding the only possible way to lose a game, which they basically already won. Verdant would come out later and say that they had it in the bag the whole time, trust. However, questions are now being asked by Nord management. Questions like, Maybe we should stop drafting Jinx, Maokai and Azir every single game. Ruddy Esports caused confusion and anger amongst the NLC fantasy community as their 2-0 week meant that all their players achieved top spots for points this week despite the fact that none of them have been unlocked yet. In education news, DMG were without their star top laner Bucci for their game up against Venomcrest due to the Swede attending his graduation. He is quoted as saying, it's an unfortunate situation, but sometimes in life you have to prioritize. I've had fun in kindergarten, but I can't wait to start going to big boy school next year. It's game day four of Sumi and Fruity Fresh from Lightside's strike against playing normal champions. As of yet, their demands are unclear. However, Sumi has been able to answer the age old question of what the dog doing with an emphatic, not very much. Blue Whites and Natives combined for what can only be described as one of the 2v2 plays of all time. For news on Blue Whites, let's hear from Carvis with our exclusive Fin in the Field report. Hello Carvis here in front of the Meilati National Hospital. According to reports, Blue Whites have been hospitalized here after another terrible week. According to rumors, Igit, the support player, has been restrained to his bed after insisting that support Jax is actually a very good pick. Back to you. It was a joyous day in the Republic of Ireland with Natives win over Blue Whites showing that they weren't the worst team in the league. Sources say this is the best thing to happen to the country since the last time something bad happened to England. The incredibly chill, fierce, chill max to to the max with this chilling chill play against Skate Rot, sending chills across the entire league, while simultaneously simplifying draft prep for all of Venomcrest's future opponents. Just ban the Echo. And finally, let's take a look at the standings. With Nord and Venomcrest both dropping games, Ruddy's 2-0 week enabled them to enter a three-way tie for first. Lightside, Verdant and DMG all sitting with two wins apiece in the mid-table. Natives managed to put some distance between themselves and the bottom of their standings with their first win of the split. And Blue Whites in last are still searching for their initial win. I've been Middlecott. This has been your NLC update. We'll see you later. At SteelSeries, we make the headsets, mice and keyboards that the world's best gamers win the most with. And we've been doing it since way back. It's up to you how far you go, but whatever you do, go for glory. DMG takes yet another victory and Bucci is back! I know Edel is back and it should be a great like statement for the league, but Bucci somehow stealing the thunder.
Let's talk about the game, though. What happened at the beginning of the game? I'm stealing that from you, Hipbrain. I know you want to talk about the croc, but let's talk about the beginning of the game. No, I wanted to talk actually about... We were asked who our MVP was that game. Uh -huh. Initially, we gave it to Bitsy. Uh, they played very, very well early. Uh, every opportunity they saw, they just ran into the jungle and stole a camp or two. And that, that CS deficit just got wider and wider and wider. Uh, Karthus was very much in that game. And everything we were worried about was settled really really mm. efficiently by a by a play that i don't think we expected because i think i went into that game saying oh i much prefer verdant's comp because in a 5v5 that comp was absolutely brutal to fight into the carpus wouldn't be able to get through the, the locket shield they wouldn't get any backline access the front line would just be too much but the gator just pulled them around the map and they never got into a strict 5v5 and that was how that game was just so so dmg focused the Bucci. What a beast. What an absolute beast. 100% and Fox, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the line was Bitsy stealing all the farm, but allowing the lanes to scale with that advantage. And then Bucci did Bucci things. And I totally agree with you, Hebrand. If it would be a 5v5, Verdant was in such a good position, but it never was. No. Because the croc was unleashed, right, Fox? Yeah. It was... I'm always so skeptical of mm -hmm. of teams that handshake Cassante with a with a bruiser top, because it always ends the same way. You know, the Cassante goes even in lane or maybe goes behind like 10, 20 CS. Maybe he dies once or something like that. And then mm -hmm. once you hit like 20 minutes, Cassante is just like 10 times the champion that whatever you've picked into it is. And, and Renekton tends to be that champ, right? Renekton tends to be that champ that gets picked into, into the Cassante. And I'm just like, I hate it. I hate it when I see it. It never works. <laughs> but Bucci was just completely on it this time around. You know, like it started off the first kind of 15 minutes was playing out the way I expected it to. But he absolutely took that match up into his hands and dominated Sheehan mm -hmm. on his own champion, mind you, right? Sheehan is a very popular Renekton player here in the NLC and you could see it with just the little ways that the little mechanics and the ways he was playing those skirmishes Bucci really knew that matchup and knew how to use it to his to its full effect and, and yeah because of that Verdon never really got to do those 5v5s and Bucci was not only able to contain the Cassante and put Cassante out of the out of the the team fights but he was demanding more from Verdon mm -hmm. in answer, right? He he needed more than just Kasani because Kasani was dying to him. Kasani was literally getting killed one v one. So, in that situation, it really sucks if you're if you're Verdon. You've got these carries that are just scaling so hard in Tristana Jinx and that Carthus as well. So the triple tank comp never gets into effect. You're never grouped up for the five v five. You're never tanky. You're always paper versus these hyper scaled yeah. hyper scaling carries. And yeah, perfect perfect game there for DMG. It was studied. I think it was studied. So that's why we're going to toss it to the interview with Bitsy from DMG after the victory versus Verdon to open up week three, day one. Wait, okay. I got surprised. I brought someone with me. <laughs> Wait, what is happening? Bye. Hello? Can, can both of you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I had something ready for you, Bitsy, but I have to adapt now. Hmm. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, as a Carthus, you were robbing your enemy non-stop. Do you think that's legal? And what was the plan? I mean, it's legal if uh, enemy is looking for a gank, then obviously I can uh, cross map in enemy jungle. I have better timer then. Also, like, Carthus is really fast in clearing, so I can just abuse enemy jungle timers. Really good. And, um, yeah, I mean, enemy game plan was too... Put the pace high in early game with Maokai, else we outscale them. So um, I took the opportunity to scale really fast. So let's toss it now to Sky. Tell me something. When, when you picked the Tristana, were you obviously leaving the Corky open because you wanted to play the Tristana versus the Corky? What was the idea about leaving the Corky open and then playing that Tristana? Tell me about it. Like enlighten um, me. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a fine matchup to take into Corky. I think there's not uh, that many good matchups for uh, that I can pick into Corky right, and Tristana is one of the good ones I think. Uh, and okay. I didn't really mind playing into the Corky. Maybe Cassiopeia is even for, like harder for Tristana, but I think I played well this game. Sorry for the 
So Don't obviously you just won, that. you have to celebrate, so yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. So when you look, both of you, you, it seems like you're playing all together and this is amazing. So when you look into DMG, the way it was in Spring Split and now it is in Summer Split, what do you believe was the big difference and how are you feeling playing within the team? Both of you. I mean, uh, the whole roster changed, so I guess that's a huge difference, no? Um, <laughs> I think uh, what you say. Like, we improved a lot, like, we, we play way better than the other players, the old team, you know? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I have to say it, but, like, they're not that good, like us. But what's the feeling playing with DMG? How do you feel the roster is right now? Like, what's the ambience with it? It seems like it's a really good ambience. I mean, it's only the two of us from the main roster here. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it looks like a good... Where, where are you standing, by the way? Are you on DMG headquarters? Uh, no, we're in... Uh, uh, in Oslo, in a school event. We're not in the DMG headquarters. Ah, okay, okay. It looks good, though. Okay, so you both know each other and you play together. Last question for both of you. What is the most shameful memory you have of each other that you can share on live? By the way, we're on Twitch. What is the what? Shameful memory. Like, yeah, yeah, like put the other one on the spot right now. Did you in some day? Hmm. I mean, we don't even really know us each, each other much longer. So. Hey, we only play for the split. And I think in scrims ah, okay. is the main thing, in match days performing, I cannot talk shit about him. Uh, I, I, can, I can't talk bad about him, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me something. Um, you are playing versus Ruddy tomorrow, both of you predictions and how hard it's going to be because it's ready they're so good right now predictions i mean i think if we play like today uh, we win easy but uh, we also had some bad games so we gotta keep it up we gotta uh, keep our focus up and then we have good chances of winning tomorrow skate rot last question for you versus alex what can i expect Oh, I'm playing, picking the talent tomorrow. I hope they don't ban it. Oh, I like that. Thank you so much for the interview. Best of luck. I want to see that talent tomorrow. Have a nice one. Good luck. <laughs> oh, I got ganked. I was not expecting this. You I look was really so not confused. expecting this. You look so confused there, mate. Yeah, because they told me like, oh, uh, we have two ready for the interview. Like, wait, well, what do you mean? It's only, it's only, no, it's it's not Vincent. <laughs> what do you mean? I got, oh, I got ganked. That's cool. I love it. Uh, you got, you, you didn't get Bucci ganked, actually. Bucci oh, I was ganked. expecting Bucci. Ah, I was, That's by okay. the way, Bucci, MVP of the match. We have to highlight that one. It was Bucci. He was the beast. Uh, the fact that he won versus Cassante and also did a line split, like uh, that that uh, split push, that split push, it was lovely to see. And it seems like we're tossing to the next game. Ruddy versus Natives. I heard on the desk, I'm not calling out names, but I heard Hip Rain saying that this is going to be probably a one-sided match. Yeah, I. you know what, I'll own up to it. I think this is probably a pretty, Pretty fun run here for Ruddy. Although watching how DMG mm. played tomorrow, they might be a little bit more nervous now. I, I actually, for a brief second, thought they had a pretty easy run of schedule this week. I think I'm going to take that back. I do still think this is probably going to be one of their easier games. Natives are second from bottom on the standings. I've not seen much life in this team. It's really sad because they were this season, this time, sorry, last season, this time mm -hmm. last season. They were three and one, not one and three. Uh, we got the wrong graphic up at the bottom. Ignore that. It is uh, yeah. Ruddy versus uh, Ruddy versus Natives. They're not so tilted. They're doing a salty run back third here. It's definitely not being what's going on. But um, yeah, looking at the band so far, nothing particularly out of the uh, out of the ordinary on that front. The Carfers getting taken away. The Talia, the Azir. Zach, obviously a fairly flexible pick right now, has also been denied, but this does still leave things like the Cassante, the Skarna, the Tristana, the Corky. There's plenty of things open for either side of these teams to be picking up. I don't know who's left or right, by the way, so hopefully the graphic <laughs> fixes itself because I don't know who's picking what. Okay, yeah, from what it. I'm getting, the idea is that uh, Ruddy is on the right side because they took out okay. Zach and Karthus, and uh, natives play that before. No, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Yeah. 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 Skarna. So this. 
No surprise. No surprise to see Skarna get sand down first pick. That is a uh, a very gross champion currently in League of Legends. Really, really strong. Great blind pick as well. Obviously, it's mostly played into uh, that top side, but it has been played in the jungle as well. I think it's better as a top laner, but it's, uh, yeah, just a really, really strong um, tanky tanky option here. It's going to be answered, though, for natives by uh, by that Tristana and Ivan. So we've already seen Tristana do some pretty cool stuff so far today. Very, very strong. 100% win rate so far in the NLC. Five wins, zero losses. You're adding, uh, combining that with a with a more supporty style jungler as well. So one of these hyper-scaling ADC champions like Tristana, going to be very happy about that. And that's the combo. We've seen this before. It's a very, very strong combo. Rel plus Rumble setting up that red carpet with uh, with the Magnet Storm. A very, very strong and a great start to this draft so here, so far here by Ruddy. Yeah, Ruddy have really drafted a disgusting yes. frontline fight wombo combo to put, put together. Now, the question is, is what is the answer going to be? So on the side of natives, uh, got themselves oh a hyperscaling ADC in the Tristana. Potentially poke, potentially on hit. Varus as well can be a little bit flexible in what he decides to go. The Ivern, I think, is going to be a big thing here. Because if the mm. Ivern isn't getting caught by all of this CC, the shielding, the survivability that Ivan offers is absolutely filthy. So it may be hard to blow up a key target if you don't catch Ivan in that combo combo. If you do, I think Ruddy have, you know, all of the tools and more to take it from mm -hmm. here. Now we're moving into the second ban phase. Uh, ADC is getting banned away from the side of natives. I think that makes sense. Uh, the Corky has been banned. I did think it was open for a brief second. Uh, but something that didn't show up at all in the last pick and bans, but is still very strong right now, is the Caitlyn. So yeah, I feel like Ruddy could ram this out of a Caitlyn if it's not banned away. I wouldn't mind be. seeing a, uh, an Ash as well. Just a little Ash bit of engage here. Like Ash into Rumble, ulti, Magnet Storm. Pretty gross combo. Yeah, very gross. Uh, right. I mean, it's going to be one or the other, right? Getting banned away here. I also, feel like Ash is almost too much Ball, CC, right? Ball has played four different champions until now. He's the highlight of the team for natives in terms of kill participation. And he's a high engager support. So with this sort of composition, double AD carry, do we get to see like another Blitzcrank that he pulled before? Or even a Leona as he did before to try and get some engage, even though you're fighting versus Rumble? I think that should be like... Okay, Leona is not going Leona. to be picked. But Blitz, for instance, is available. But do you force this? Hey, we want to pick someone from the other team when you have a Rumble in the Scarlet. Do you I'm, actually want to go through the risk? I'm not sure if I would want to have a Blitz crank. I don't think he's going to offer too much in this team. I don't they think they could run the enchanter. <laughs> for you could run the enchanter <laughs> angle and just have double enchanters, and that would potentially give the survivability to the AD carries on the side of natives through all of the burst and the wombo. Um, and that actually does look like the angle. Now, I really like this because there's a there's one thing we haven't really hit on, but Skarn and Rel are going to be standing on top of each other. When you hit someone with the Seraphine art, it extends the, the range of it. And Ruddy probably going to be kind of lining up in these fights. Ser Ser uh, Seraphine is going to be very good into that. On top of that, with just the mass healing with the Ivern. Natives have some scaling capabilities here. Is that He's locked? Back. That's a Zed mid for Aelix. That's a Zed. Okay. I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to play an assassin into double enchanter. I'm, yeah, I'm that real is. With you. That is, that is not fun. That is not going to be a so fun. That is so Alex. That is so Alex. He's such an ego player, honestly. In this <laughs> you can just see it. You just see it every single time, and I'm not surprised. If you said to me, "Look, someone slammed in Zed," I'd be mean, it's Alex. Someone slammed in Zed versus double enchanter. Definitely Alex. Oh, uh, and yeah. So that. this this rounds it out then. I mean, to be honest, one of the very rare occasions where you're sort of lacking physical damage if you're if you're ruddy. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter too much because, like, who's going to be building... Yeah, like, they're just squishy. It doesn't matter. Your damage profile really doesn't matter too much when you're playing versus a lot of squishy. So um, there is a, maybe a slight thing, which might not even be a thing, but the fact that Zed can itemize into um, Serpent's Fang is pretty good versus Ivan and Seraphine, but... yeah. Um, that's a minor thing. He might not, you know, I, yeah. If there's anyone who would not buy that item on Zed versus Shield, it would be Alex as well. So I'm a little bit worried, I'll be honest, for, for natives' lack of mobility outside of the Tristana when you're up against Rumble Rail combination. So chuck in some, some Zig stuff there too. Can be pretty tough. Uh, gonna have to rely on that poke, I reckon, from, uh, from the Varus to 
to get that sorted before you just get collapsing and comboed down from running. So, I don't disagree at all, but I do think the amount of healing and shielding that natives have is going to be really, really hard yep. for Ruddy to break through. And obviously, you're going to have some of the burns because I'm assuming we're going to see some burns coming in from the, the Ziggs. But you have a pretty competent team put together here uh, mm -hmm. on the side of natives. Now, if I turned the nameplates off, I would be a lot more inclined to say, I actually really like what natives are put together. But with the nameplates on, and with the fact that Ruddy are a hands checking team, they will scrap with you, they will fight you, they will they will check your ability to play the game. And we know that they're capable. I, I've got to give it a Ruddy. Yes, yeah. I think the Zed was a pretty greedy, pretty ego pick. But I feel like if anyone's going to be able to pilot this, that in this game, it is going to be Alix. I think they've given themselves tools that aren't completely useless as well. I think Ruddy, you know, the Ziggs is going to have good wave clear for the team. He'll be able to contribute to the team fights. The Wombo combo, the Rail, Rail Rumble, absolutely filthy. So that, along with the fact that it is just Ruddy playing, leads me to get, say, I think, yeah, Ruddy have got this one in the bag. So we got our predictions on, and it's Ruddy versus Natives. It looks like the team composition from Natives is going full ham on shields. On the other side, Ruddy with an average 26 kills per game. Let's see if they are able to do it yet again. As we toss it to the casters yet again, Duckling and Rudu, tell me, how are you? We're good, we're doing good. Still, uh, you know, just trying to survive after we watched what Bucci did just last game, but this draft, Rudu, it was a bit interesting. You, uh, you know, discussing your thoughts during uh, during the process to me in the green room. Always interesting to hear what a smart person has to say compared to Ashram on the desk. Wait, so, uh, did you hear any of that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Carry on. Regardless, though, I uh, I am very excited to get into this game. I'm I'm in particular excited for Alex here, right? Because it was discussed on the desk as well by two of the smart people there, Hipprain and um, and Foxdrop. An assassin into this squishy of a lineup with two enchanters as well. Alex on the set, he's normally very good on it. In this matchup, if he gets rolling, I think you could take over. Genuinely yeah, absolutely. Just the rift. Yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword with assassins versus enchanters because on the one hand, wow, they're so squishy, I can pop them in one shot, but equally... Ah, they have so much shielding, maybe I don't quite have the damage to, to take them out in one hit. And it's really going to be a just a case of breakpoints. Whether or not Alex has the damage, if he does, he can very easily run amok. If he doesn't, then he's going to fall very flat on his face. Yeah, it's all on Alex to see how that assassin performs. We'll find out as we head into the game. And on to the rift we go. Nonable once and again seems to be in place. But Rudu, I instantly want to carry our conversation towards one thing in particular. Nata here, right? NLC champion with X7 just a few short years ago. But obviously, an AD carry player now on a mage. It is not the first time this split we've seen him take a step back, play something like the Jin, and just scale up and do his job and not get much attention around him. Where you know it's often on the top side and uh, or Alex in the mid lane, but. Fanata now getting onto a mage that really is a sign of just playing the weak side and uh, how do you think he'll perform on this? Yeah, I mean, w what I saw from Nata last week was that he can play whatever he fancies and I will have faith that they will be able to do what the team needs from them. You've got first strike on the zigs here as well, so able to play out that range. I think that the early laning phase is going to be difficult. You're playing versus Varus, who is typically a very bully laner anyway, and then a Seraphine as well, so... Double range, not going to be easy, but you can already see just managing to dodge out on a few of these spells. It may not look like a lot, but dodging out on this early poke, it's wasted mana from natives. Oh, the engage with the remount ball, taking a bit of damage, but Alaric just needs to uh, to get out safely there. One thing that is really crazy when I look at it, look at all the first strikes. We've got five first strikes in this game. Half of the players are using the rune. In particular, it's not the first time we've seen this in the NLC, the double range bot lane with first strikes. We saw it with the Luchanami as well, where they were double first strike, and it is very interesting to me. I guess it is simply just due to the fact that when you proc it, you get guaranteed 15 gold, which over the course of a whole laning phase adds up to quite a lot, but it is nonetheless very interesting to see this rune be prioritized so heavily. 
yeah, it's just, it's just really solid for these double range laners. Gives you a little bit of extra bonus damage as well. So, no surprises to see that you ranged champions down on that bot side are looking to get a little bit of extra gold, get a little bit of extra damage as well. Make this Rel's life feel a little bit worse for wear. Obviously, you've already hyped up Nata. I want to spend a little bit of time on doing a similar thing for Kiruka. No much lesser known quantity coming into the split, but who has had a very, very solid start. Mm. Uh, again, playing very heavily toward meta, toward the AP junglers. And I feel like he's one of the few junglers who's actually playing toward the AP style of jungle that we're starting to come to see to the fold. Obviously, Highbridge as well, managing to take this Ivor in a little bit of a different vein. The Enchanter style more so than just a hard AP champion, but oh, hello. same sort of vibe. Painful. It's a good trade in there, and I, I do agree with you. Kirugan has been very good, in my opinion. He was, as you say, one of the question mark, and not only on his AP picks, but in general has performed very well. Same goes for Alaric, one of the unknown factors on this roster. I think Ruddy, over the course of the, the offseason, has rebuilt very well around the parts that they were losing, some due to school and other IRL. Um, requirements that they had to uh, to attend to and they're free build well they look i, I don't want to say stronger but they look more um, more aggressive more exciting which takes quite a bit to say considering how aggressive yeah. the old ruddy was as well no exactly uh obviously 99 is going to take some <laughs> take some shoes to try and fill in that aggressive department uh, with the uh, the olaf the jacks is coming to the fold through the later stages of the nlc last split uh, but if we're looking at this game in particular, natives with this composition, looking like it's going to be that more poke-oriented style of the virus. If you've got the first strike, you've got the AD carry in the mid lane paired along Flash, with the Chanter. Crash down and the CC is there. Ball Goodbye. just dead. Burned to smithereens as Nata claims the first blood. And that's not even a, oh, ball, you misplayed there kind of moment. It's just a really well-executed gank down on the bot side. Kit Rukan once again. Making their presence felt early on. Alaric again stepping up, being this engaged source that really can consistently rely on. Finds first blood, finds an extra 400 gold into Nata's pocket. And again, for a champion that we were thinking, ah, yeah, you're probably going to get weak sided playing the Ziggs. Getting 400 gold feels very good indeed. That is very nice. And I wholeheartedly agree with your point. It was just a good play all around. Kadrug and Alaric teaming up. Alaric's been a pleasant surprise. I think the thing with support players, right, there's always the question of what kind of support are they? Are they just focusing on only playing for the lane? Are they more an enchanter, defensive, engaged support who will play to kite for their carry instead of looking for the place? And Alaric is very simple in style. He goes forward and he will continue to do that regardless of how the game is going. Sometimes they're a bit too far, but times like this, it works out and it looks incredibly well coordinated. Yeah, nice little uh, Q flash there from Alaric. Managed to layer the CC very well, gave very little time for Ball to do any sort of reaction. Looking at the objectives though, we do see that Hybrid is walking at the very least near this Drake. Has got pushing the bot side and the mid lane as well, so maybe going to be able to take the first neutral objective of the game. There's a ward from Theoloris as well on the rat on the Void Grubs. Mm -hmm. See Alex take the shadow forward. Doesn't fancy himself the death mark just yet. When you've got Rocket Jump plus Buster Shot, it's not necessarily the easiest all in to go for on Twitch or Starnet. Yeah, and with the first rate being up, painful ro ro rotate down to secure this for Natives. It is a team that um, didn't have the start of the split they were hoping for, I think it's fair to say. A roster with, yet again, unknown quantities, which has been seen on pretty much every roster this year, in or the split rather, in the NLC. A few elite series players, as painful being the only known factor from last split, finishing in a fourth position with Venom Crest. And that's also the biggest. Um, Biggest achievement you could say anyone on this roster have had. Theolaris, LFL, Div2, Hybrid. I, I, when I was taking notes for this player and doing my research, all I found out was he's, he's half Aussie and, um, and who. I had no idea who the guy was. The research didn't tell me much and didn't really show oh, his head. Are you just checking him like that? Yeah, I did random check him and he was a random before he joined this. Nato, no longer random. He's now just half Aussie, half Irish and, you know, I respect those roots. Alright, fair enough. Uh, any particular reason why, or are we just... Because it's not English? <laughs> okay, understood. And and appreciated, honestly. Uh, you're not going to get this base. He got that base. Never yeah. mind. All right, a little yeah. bit of a whiff there from Nata. I take it back. Do you, uh, do, did you watch Kiori back in the day with... Um, you putting in those I did. Fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the yeah. good old Six video with the uh, slam dunk? Come on, and slam. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I got flashbacks to that with the WQ, but it didn't quite connect <laughs> this time around, though. As Alaric looking for something in the mid lane, the Q connects. A painful times at nicely and escapes while still clearing the wave. That oozes of confidence there from the mid laner from Nadis as hybrid. Could be a bit of trouble here. Get Rugen stopped in his tracks, though, as he instead just focus on, on the Raptors as Ball pays them a visit as well. All right, I want to take a look a little bit later on into the game. This early game has been fairly stagnant, fairly slow. We've obviously had the first flood in the bot lane, but how are the team fight's going to look to play out as we get later on into the game? Because Hitprey made some really good points on the desk that composition for natives can function very well into this ruddy comp because they are four melee champions, effectively, with a Ziggs. Those four melee champions have to get in somehow. They're going to have to go through Ivan, go through Seraphine, all of the slows, the CCs, the shields that they're going to be able to pump out. And of course, the consistent DPS from a Tristana, the Pope from Avaris as well. What that means for Ruddy is they need to be looking for flank angles as we move later into the game. Vision is going to be very important. Something that Alaric is going to have to try and step up on. Make sure that there's a way for his solo laners to find angles into these fights. Give Alex a way into the backline. Give Built that same access as well. Because if they're unable to do that and they all continue to just try and pile in through the front door, oh, they're going to fail. Alaric, such a clean combo there on the rail. Forces both summoners out of space as in the mid lane, all in seems to be coming through painful, looking for the kill. Alex looking for the exact same thing as Pop goes to Death Plus and the solo kill was found. Now the bot lane, more action to ensue. Ball, the next target, flash heal available as the encore comes through. Good flash as the red carpet is laid down as well. Karuken looking for the kill, oh, but instead he overstays the shield and the heal is simply too much to handle as native strike back. All summoner spells burned down in the bot side. Kiruka not forcing their own flash. Alaric now gets the buffer. Very well played on the crash down for Aramancy to make sure they get out to safety. Ruddy overstepping just a little bit down on that bot side. Kiruka with a rare misstep. Unable to take down space or ball. Yeah, simply jumps too far forward. And speaking of that, same happened for Painful. He felt like he could take the 1v1 as I think that is the. Yeah. Nice. No, very nice. There's not much else to add. Just nice. But but pretty clean. But I, I really straightforward. I think that mistake from painful could be useful. Become a mate, right? Because that first blood yes. really opens up the flock that's here for Alex. He's now got his first item. He's now a bit accelerated. That 700 gold. If it continues to grow, it can go out of control. And that one mistake has given him the opportunity to do just that, right? He's now started to go ahead. Let's see this all one more time as we take it away. Yeah. So space, obviously, you know. Double summoners to get out to safety, a little bit trigger happy uh, with potentially the barrier. You know, you were going to flash out before the damage had landed. Maybe you can get away with it. I like this effort from Kit Rukan, right? Layers the red carpet right down the death alley of the turret. Unfortunately, the cooldowns come back for Bull. He gets rooted underneath that turret and a flash shield in. Uh, also, just in case there was enough damage coming down there, Highbridge with, was able to keep his bot lane alive. 2-0 for space now. He was able to find that return kill onto Nata as well with the Chain of Corruption into the Piercing Arrow. So, maybe a world where this virus could very easily be dangerous as we move a little bit later into the rest of this game. But now, well, Painful hops forward. Dangerous. This play could become something, but in the end, Valorik able to crash down to save the Yellowrick. Pushing in the wave as painful and ball arrives. It seems like Adrugan is stopping taking the, the um, void grabs here instead. They might want to force a fight. Alaric, CC chain is good. Crashdown still available. Won't be needed though as Hybrid falls. Yet again, the kill goes on to Alex. If he finds one more here, he does. It's done. Two more kills into Alex's pocket. This set about to get out of control. Top lane though, Fialaris wants to get something back. All out use. Build. The target in the 1v1. The fight is close. The E is there. The auto attacks and Theodorus oversteps and build punishes. And all areas of the map continue to go in Ruddy's favor. Natives making plays where space isn't continues to be their downfall. The one area where they've got some semblance of a gold advantage. Not able to make it work around there. Alex now 3 and 0 on the Z. And those concerns that we had about late games, about finding ways into fights really do you get dropped by the wayside if you're able to just walk straight into an overextended natives that is a horrifying sight to behold right the three oh now on alex when he gets back and spends the goal i'll be excited to see how many items he is sitting on luckily though for me he's on my fantasy team if you haven't signed up yet be sure to head over and do that i i was number 16 just last week by the way when i 
at that as space is dead within the end of the sweep. He's gonna go down here, no summoners. I mean, the barrier is available, but the flash not there, so no escape. Kiruken comes in just to proc that first strike goal, by the way. Getting more value out of the kill, he claims it as well. Now it's a truly playing the weak side, gifting the kill over to the jungler. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, he got he got a kill earlier on. It's time to repay that debt. And the fact that you gave this guy a week to live down on that bot side there, that was pretty crazy. But uh, Space obviously falling. Nice to see that he doesn't bend the barrier, but he did end up popping the cull. So able to at least get a little bit of a cash in on that wave. Goes back to base, finishes off another serrated Dirk. What I love to see from Varus as, as well is when they go for a third item mirror mana instead of a second. It's so difficult to stack this tier consistently on a Varus. You just go for it at third item, and by that point, you usually are able to find the Mirror Mana transformation at about the same time. Second item can be really whatever you please. Maybe a Yomu's, maybe maybe a Serpent's Fang, who knows? Because if I don't see one of those from Alex, I'm going to be very, very sad. Yeah, but it needs to happen, right? It, it has to. Hopefully, though, this pause is just a small pause, you know, with how the day has been going on the live servers. I am certainly one mm. to be worried of any pause in the slightest, but as we've been told, there should be no issues from that on the broadcast, so hopefully things are flowing smoothly. It could just be a classic esports break. Oops, I spilled water on my keyboard. Oops, I gotta go to the toilet. Uh, or maybe, you know, my PC blue screened. Anything can happen, right? It is esports after all. But, uh, but at the end of the day, though, one thing is for sure, and it's Ruddy are comfortably in the lead. Alex, he's on the verge of snowboarding out of control. Yeah, and, and you know, credit to the desk as well, because this is kind of what they'd highlighted, right? That the native's composition, if we turn off the nameplates, hey, this, this looks pretty good. If we play these team fights as a five man, we try and death ball, we try and clump up, it's going to be really difficult uh, for Ruddy to do anything versus this composition. Uh, but Hitbrain said, you know, we've we've got nameplates to turn on. Unfortunately, Ruddy are going to try and scrap you wherever you go. And the second that native step one step too far forward, Alex is there to punish with the death mark. Kit Rukan, who's equalizing from two screens away, and Ruddy, they're not giving natives the space to get to these late game death ball status states. Uh, and in case that wasn't bad enough, their top plane, which has been very, very isolated, is just going built way. He found a solo kill on the top side, winning this Skarna versus Kasante matchup, and uh, now probably just takes the turret as well. It should be, uh, be gone pretty soon. One thing though that I do want to mention, I know this is a bit off topic, but it is kind of sad that Nata gave the kill, Nata gave that kill over to the Kid Rukin. Nata is my captain on, uh, on Fantasy, you know? He, uh, he could use that gold or mm. those extra points. He did really well last week. Yeah, he could use those yeah, extra points. That's, I, I what, that's, what, that's why you're Exactly. So I, I do want to mention that. Top 16, I'm proud of that. I'm, I am smashing initialize. He's also signed up and he is not performing well. That is a, a TP that won't go down in history. As a, a good TP, Alex getting put quite low. So Serpent's Fang though completed already. The teams look to there be able go. to help him up. Let's see what happens here though. Alex is half. Alaric is here. Daisy has been summoned. As Cass can already find their way out of this because it seems like natives are set on making something happen. Or happen. Yeesh. As Alex is slow but continues to walk forward. Red carpet being laid down. The equalizer dishing out the damage and hybrid. He's taken down by Alex. Ah, it's gone. It's done. Space doing well to poke back, but I mean, he can't get Alex. And yeah, that's a fourth kill for, for the already snowballing, uh, snowballing set. Just in, just, in, just in case Alex wasn't far enough ahead, we'll give him an extra kill just to make sure that this guy is going to be an absolute fiend as we move later into the game. We get to see Bill here, potentially trying to gank Painful. I don't know that Painful knows that the Skarner's here right now. Yeah, now he knows though, and it will be a Painful death, I would say. But maybe he finds his way out. He comes through Bill. Ah, I guess he's dead. No W anymore. The slow connects. The pullback isn't quite there. The reset though. Oh. Come on and slam. And welcome to the jam as Nata snipes him out. That's a... Uh, he missed the... Didn't use the W. The central charge didn't come through still though. Nice snipe. No, but we did miss a important, looks to have been a one for one down on the bot side. Alex did go down, I believe at the hands of space. So the virus continuing to find these injections of gold, continuing to find ways to be irrelevant, be relevant, excuse me, in this game. Maybe we'll get to see this virus do just a little bit more in this game than we might have initially thought. Obviously, uh, playing Varus versus Z going to be very, very difficult in mobile AD carry, whatnot. With a chain of corruption, you're hoping that you'll be able to land that the second of Z lands on you, and with good chain CC, you should be able to take him down. 
Let's uh, let's take a look at it one more time here. So the fact that Alex stays, <laughs> like he, he stayed for a minute at this uh, this amount of HP. He is playing it at the edge. So what happens? He goes for space, completely whiffs the shurikens. Still gets the kill, of course, because he's set. But space gets the massive shutdown. That's a win, <laughs> massive win there for him. You know, getting double, more than double the gold. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, we get to see the, the power, really, of trying to focus out of Zed. you got the instant encore from Ball, knows exactly where the Zed's going to land. Space able to sort of stay there, make sure that the Seraphine ulti does come through, and that they're able to find a trade kill, at least of some sorts. Important item has been hit as well in the bot side for Narta, now has finished off. Seraph's Embrace has a little bit of an extra shield as well there. Mm. Yeah, that South Embrace could be very useful. So, at this point of the game, it feels mm -hmm. like we're kind of... No, I don't want to say back to the to the game scene of the first game because there were differences, but the main thing I'm ha I am want to highlight here is Verton had Extra, who was getting ridiculously fed on the Corgi and trying to hold this together. This time it feels like Space is... Every time Verton... Like, oh, not Verton, rather. Natives are getting something. The gold lands on this guy. So it's all on this defensive barrier to now try and delay this game and allow his team to get back on track and you know, scale into the right position because Space, I mean, he's been the one who's got it all. Yeah, I just feel like the lesser of two evils, if you're, if you're natives, would have much rather had this gold on your Tristana. Uh, just being a hyper carry versus a poke champion, I always am going to value that a little bit higher, especially when we've got enchanter pairings alongside you. Things like uh, just a, an ardent sensor, just going to go a little bit better with a Tristana than it will do a Varus. So maybe when those items start to come through, we can see the supports gear they're built a little bit more to a poke style of build necessarily over a consistent AD carry type of threat. But when you've got two ADs moving into the late stages of the game, you've got this big front line in the Cassante as well. The composition really does play itself. They're just looking to play clean front to back to have the Cassante as that front line, have themselves double poke or double ADs, double enchanters and make it so whoever goes in there really hates their life. Yeah, I, uh, I do agree with that point. I uh, I want to give an update, but I don't know exactly what's going on. I will let you know if anything. Good talk. Good talk. Has gone completely wrong. I am. I'm just fearing for the worst. That's what I'm trying to say here, Rude. Mm. I am. Uh, I'm scared. You know, it's been a long day uh, in terms of what Riot has had to work with on uh, on Vanguard. But you know, things are hopefully going in the right direction. And that, that's, the, that, an that's the reverse of a caster curse. That is the reverse caster curse. I have, uh, you know, it's been a good day so far. So instead of caster cruising and giving us a 20 minute break, I caster cruise us into going right back into the game. Hey, man. You're one of a kind. Not everybody can do that. Well played. We all, we all appreciate you for it. Let's get a TY duckling. Uh, just so we all know that we are appreciative of our young Danish friend. Unless you're Ashram, of course. Ooh, Danish friend. Have you ever seen that clip? <laughs> no. Nah, it's like a it's like a football clip with Casper Smigel when he meets uh, Yannick Vestergaard in the tunnel before ah, yes. back when he played for Southampton and Jamie Vardy was Ooh, Danish friend. <laughs> I actually have seen that clip. That's yeah, very good. Seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um you did just say a Danish name and it made me laugh because it was maybe the most Danish name that I could have th thought of. Nevertheless, yeah. uh, we'll Yannick Vestergaard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a two two meter tall mountain and tomorrow he is gonna be uh, outpaced by the likes of anyone who can move on the English national team. <laughs> he is a, uh, he's a brick wall. Just like Bill, uh, brick by brick, is uh, laying into Theodorus here, taking down one turret at a time. 2.1k gold lead, by the way. He's built that all on his own, and that was no pun intended of that, as he's uh, he's just done, you know, top end things, left to his own devices, and he comes out on top. Oh, all in oh, bot no. side. Flash available, yeah, ball is there. Look at that champion, buddy, it's gross. And Alex right. is just piloting exceptionally well as oh, Space no. caught out the hope they had extinguished by Kid Rukin's fire as he finds another kill for himself. This game is all in Ruddy's control. Now it feels as maybe it could go from bad to worse if this play works out. Painful, the target, the remount, the crash down, not need as Alex will claim it. No Kid Rukin instead. As the mid lanes here do as well under siege. What is happening? The tempo wow. stepping up. The other is trying to stop Ruddy. But if that's one thing you should know, you can stop this Ruddy from going ahead with what they want. They are claiming everything they could want on the rift. Turret kills doesn't matter. This game snowballed within two minutes into Ruddy's firm control. Let's under the turret belt. Yeah, 
He is available. Will he use it? No, he will not. Space Flash does not connect and build. Now just trying to make sure his support makes it out instead, maybe. The bot lane of Natus could be in trouble. Flash and Barrier already used Alaric remounting to secure the kill. As now here comes Painful. Finds one. The resets forward are there as Alex now trying to turn the play around on Painful. The Shurikens fly wide and with that the kill will be claimed. Nata, the target of the Oleris, who's full HP but built TP's back in the fight. I think it's about to end. And with that, I can't remember how many went down in that play. <laughs> I need the Kanai man, but Rudy, they come away with a massive win. And two turrets in the mid lane down, two turrets in the bot lane down. I don't know if that all happened in that small sequence, but the map just exploded into their favor. 8k gold now their advantage. Built moves out of the top lane and absolutely slam dunks natives and taking down a couple of turrets as well. The duo pushing power of a Skarner and a Ziggs, not a duo that I thought I'd see pair up, but one that I sure I'm glad to have seen. Nata already on this Ziggs with those two items, just taking turrets left, right and center. Yeah, as Bill makes his way back to the top side. They are not, no, no longer looking for turrets left, right and center. Now they want the kills as it is the target that's on the LRS's back. The damage coming through, ball instead, easier, squishier, taken <laughs> down. Alex trying to snipe, connects, but the damage on the tank, just not quite there. As, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how this happened. Within two minutes, this game is now over. We were at a point before where I think Native still had a few more chances left, but they used them as soon as they got back on the rift. And th this game is now done. Like, look at what's happening. We're 90 minutes in, we're between two turrets as Alex. We'll try and find more kills. Hyperage is the target. Yeah, yeah. This is gross. Just yeah. Congratulations. Ready will go up to four and one. I guess. Unfortunately, at this point, natives really are just a a, a sixth through eleventh camp on the ruddy radar right now. What am I watching? Sorry, How are they doing the top this? Side. And Hibbert is going to go down as oh well. Kerukan. Kerukan. That was nasty. That is gross. This could just be game if they had more minions. I mean, what? I'm shell shocked here. This has gone on. They, they, they just turned the pedal to the metal. <laughs> and within two. I, I'm not joking. Three, four yeah. minutes ago, this game was 3,000 gold within reach. Now it's an 11,000 gold lead. And that has gotten four kills, by the way. That's good for my fantasy point. Shout out to him. Just a, a a single whiff of blood in the water. And all of a sudden, natives are, are almost just a carcass on the floor at this point. So little left for them to give in this game as Bill, you know, runs into some of the potential potholes that this composition would have as native, you know, gets ended up rooted. Not able to find that engage so cleanly, but just the position on the map, the fact that you've got such long range follow up from Kit Rukin as well. Really all does go to plan for Ruddy. Top tier three plus inhibitor going to fall as well. They found an extra couple of kills also. Uh, maybe an argument to say, hey, you could be playing this mid lane and this bot lane a little bit better, try and have those oh synchronized wave crashes. But like when, when when you're playing League of Legends so well on a micro level, if you forget to push a bot wave, I'm really not bothered. Yeah, yeah, the Baron is gone, by the way. It's just done in the replay. That's insane. As now the fight continues to erupt. I think Elric might be in a bit of trouble. No, this TP from the flank should spell doom. Alex is stopped. Theodorus. Sacrificing himself for the team, genuinely a massive TP. I think that might have bought them one more minute of life here, unless Ready just <laughs> falls their way into the Nexus and end the game. Yeah, it they're going to push in this happen. mid wave. Looks like a lot of them are going up toward this top side with the Baron. I mean, hey, why not? Let's take a look, see what we can sniff out here with a Ziggs. He's actually in the mid lane, manages to make his way over. Those turrets really won't last too long. No. Yeah, the turrets are gone. Just look oh at them disappear. God. Nata can take the next one. 22 minutes Demolish. in. Five minutes ago, ago this game was, was within reach of natives. Now it's Ruddy having fun. Oh, they've been dominating. What has happened here as Ruddy moved to a sole position in the first place with a scoreline of 4-1? and one. Yeah, just, just a single drop in the water. Ruddy swarm and managed to take down this game. It was clinical. It was lethal. Uh, and a well-deserved victory for Ruddy coming away with just a, a clean and cut, very well executed W. Yeah, that was gross. That was absolutely crazy. Blink and you'll miss it. Imagine if you walked out and got some, maybe, I don't know, made some, made some food, made some noodles yeah. during the break. Then you came back 
after the pause, I thought, oh, this game could still go on for maybe 15, 20 minutes more. Five minutes later, you're watching this now, and we're talking about how Ruddy just absolutely... We're not still in the pause, they, guys. That is the, crazy. The yeah, this is, this is not still the pause, by the way. The, the game is done. Ruddy just crushed him. That is crazy. Wow, I am shocked. Ruddy looking very dangerous in the skirmishes so far during this split. More about that, though, after the break, as the desk will break it down and hype us up for our third game of the day. See you for the break. Break it down, break it down Step on the gas, let's get out of town We're gonna break out and have some fun We're gonna do what we never done Oh yeah, yeah Come on, come on, take your body with you It's a money, money, money weekend Everything we wanna, we gonna do 